Foo! Hey everybody, Teching101 here, and today's video is gonna be about heroes. But not these kind of heroes, a special kind of hero. In fact, some people might not even call them heroes at all. Today's video is gonna be all about vigilantes! Ha! Huh, okay, might have been a little hot to wear that get up the entire video, but uh, I hope you appreciate my makeshift cosplay. I, I know I did. Okay, so My Hero Academia Vigilantes, uh, a prequel to the original My Hero Academia series. It's set a few years before that. Uh, I gotta thank the good people at Viz Media for sponsoring this video and for sending me an advanced copy of the Tonka Bon. Um, this will actually go on sale next month in July, so pick up your copy. Um, before we even get into it, though, before we start talking about the plot and the characters and all that stuff, let me just put some fears to rest about the word spin-off, okay? Because I've read a lot of manga in my life. You could clearly defer, uh, infer that from looking at my room. And uh, with spin-offs, let me tell you, it's always a little, you know, kind of hesitant to pick them up because this is a series I love very much, but now it's being handled by a different writer with a different art style. In this case, there's a writer and an artist. It is written by Hideyuki Furuhashi, and it is drawn by Benton Court. Um, and Benton Court's art style, though, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid that this is going to look aesthetically different from the My Hero Academia manga because I can't even tell the difference sometimes. In fact, Horikoshi actually drew the main characters from Vigilantes at the end of this as sort of like a bonus, and if you put his artwork next to Benton Court's artwork, I mean, yeah, you can tell there's a difference, but it is so close to the original art that you can't even tell. Even the way he draws his background characters and the original characters just in Vigilantes does a great job there. So don't worry about the art, and also don't worry about the plot or the characters because they're all synced up perfectly well. Everything fits in the My Hero Academia universe in Vigilantes, okay? So don't worry. You can pick it up, dive right into it. You are right in that universe um, the same way that you would feel like reading the first chapter of the original series. So, so don't be worried about that. But, um, all right, let's get into talking about our main cast. There are three main characters in Vigilantes that we focus on. First is our main character, uh, Koichi, who is a 19-year-old university student, uh, rather shy, rather reserved, doesn't really stand out very much. Now, unlike the main character in the original story, uh, Izuku Midoriya, Koichi has a quirk. His quirk is referred to as slide and glide, which is a mobility type quirk. As long as three different parts of his body are touching a surface, he can glide and slide around that surface in a variety of directions. This includes even, you know, vertical walls. He can slide up a building. Uh, if he's in an alleyway and there's like two buildings, uh, you know, from both sides, he could just, you know, two hands on the walls and then two legs and he could like slide straight up like an elevator. Um, it's a very useful quirk, as I'm sure there are a lot of other useful quirks like that in the world, and there was a time in his life, like many other people, including Izuku, where Koichi wanted to be a hero, but it's just that his quirk wasn't suited for that kind of stuff, and that's the brilliance of Vigilantes. It's because we delve into a separate area of the society of My Hero Academia. In the original story, it's basically a coming-of-age tale for the students of Class 1A and for Izuku dealing in with the powers of One for All and, you know, All Might and everybody, their main characters there, and they do appear here in um, as cameos, um, and we'll get into that, but I just want to bring up that it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the movie Incredibles, where you have a bunch of superheroes in society, but they're basically told to not use their powers and to basically make sure that there's a status quo, and so you don't have you know even if you have something that makes you special, you can't express it. And so what does that do to people? I mean, already in our society we have things that make us different, but imagine if you had a superpower, not something incredible like you don't have the ability to fly through the sky at Mach one or something, but Let's say you had the ability to, I don't know, levitate off the ground like a foot or something like that. Something that really wouldn't be that useful in like a combat situation. You couldn't become a hero or something, but it's something kind of unique to you. But in the society of My Hero Academia, even if your quirk is something like Koichi's, where it's just, oh, he can slide on the ground. That doesn't seem very harmful. Uh, harmful. Even if it's something like that, you're told by society, unless you're a hero, you're not allowed to use your quirk. So there's that special part of you that you have to restrict. And so what does that do to the people in that world? Well, some people just kind of grow accustomed to it and they go about their everyday lives and just kind of forget sometimes they maybe even have quirks or they just confine them to their to their private lives but then you have people like Koichi who decides to stand against the law so at night after he's had to deal with you know his boring mundane life all day and uh, getting beat up by some street thugs at work he decides to let off some steam he dons an authentic all might hoodie that he bought off Amazon and he throws on a surgical mask that's seriously what that thing 
thing is, and he becomes Nice Guy, the hero in the shadows that directs people when they get lost and gives them their stuff that they drop when they're walking on the dark city streets. Isn't he such a swell dude? <laughs> yeah, Nice Guy is literally what people call him. So, um, this is cool because it shows that there's more than just one path. You know, if you want to use your quirk and you don't, you can't become a hero for whatever reason, you think that you would just fall into the darkness and become a villain. Not necessarily. Koichi still knows that it's wrong to use your quirk to hurt people or to, like, rob a bank or something, but society tells him he can't be a hero, but he still wants to use his quirk, so he just decides to use it under cover of night. Puts on a simple disguise so nobody can really recognize him, but he does more, you know, good than bad. So, even though it's still against the law, technically, he's doing good in his own way, so, you know, who would really, uh, who, who would argue with that? Well, the police would, and that's something else that you have to kind of carry over from the original story. The police and the laws of this world play a big role in My Hero Academia. It's not just superheroes going around busting up bad guys, and that's the entire thing. It really is a sense of realism in that regard, so that carries over to Vigilantes, where the cops are on Koichi and the other main character's tail, constantly trying to like, oh, okay, well, you know, we need to figure out who these people are. Even though they're they're doing good in taking down these villains, they're doing it outside the law, and vigilantism is a crime. Our other main characters include Pop Step, who is a high school girl that uses her quirk leap to bound around the city streets and the major thoroughfares and do these crazy pop performances where she sings really lame songs. And you think she's kind of just an attention seeker there, and she totally is. Hey, she's a high school girl, what do you want? Um, and there's also a fair amount of fan service for her in the series. Just just look at the back of the Tonko Bon here, but okay. Um, I like a lot of her facial expressions and her interaction with, interactions with other characters. They're just they're just beautiful. Um, and then our final main character is a rough and tough older dude by the name of Knuckle Duster. He won me immediately just from the name alone. But then you get this, and he's just this tough old bastard. Um, his design is seriously just based off of Batman, as was stated in, like, the supplemental material. And uh, what is his quirk? Well, he doesn't actually have one, and we find this out in the second chapter. It's actually something that we find out through Eraserhead. That's right, Eraserhead makes a cameo. Now keep in mind, once again, this is a prequel to My Hero Academia. It's a few years before Izuku will actually meet All Might and receive one for all and all that stuff. So, um, you know, Izuku is still a middle school student, and even Izuku does kind of appear as a cameo, but he's just kind of in the shadows. He's he's not the main focus of this. Um, but yeah, in the second chapter, Eraserhead shows up, has a little bit of a, scu uh, of a scuffle with Knuckle Duster, and he finds out he doesn't have a quirk. He's just this tough old man. And um, that's the neat thing, though. Even though it's, it's set in the same world and in the same city, and yes, we're going to see the heroes. There's a later chapter where all the heroes show up to take on all these villains, so uh, Best Genus is there, Endeavor is there, All Might makes an appearance, but it's really just like, okay, we're the heroes, you know, beat up the villains, alright, later everybody, and then they speed away. Um, the cool thing is you're not sitting there just reading this, waiting for the cameos. It's not like I read the second chapter, and it's like, oh man, Eraserhead, and then the rest of it, I'm just sitting there waiting for Eraserhead to show up again. It's not like that at all. It ties it into the original story, and it lets us know that, yes, this, this is the same city, so of course you would run into the same heroes that are guarding it, um, but you're not, you're invested in this story, okay? And what is the story of Vigilantes? Well, uh, it's basically a drug war. I know, it's pretty cool, right? You got some vigilantes, you got the police, and you got a drug war going on. Specifically, uh, a new kind of quirk booster called Trigger is hitting the streets, and we have some mysterious drug dealers um, dealing it out to some um, unsuspecting youth, and that seems to be kind of a trend, too. We get a lot of um, middle school students as sort of like supporting cast in this. Two of them, I, I'm not even kidding here, are based off of Cyclops and Beast from X-Men, so there's still a lot of reference. Like, All Might is obviously you know, a reference to Superman. I mean, it's pretty obvious. But these characters are also references to other various comic book lores, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this new drug called Trigger, basically what it does is you inject it, it makes your quirk go out of control, so it gives a huge boost to even relatively weak quirks. However, it also makes you kind of go crazy, and you become an instant villain, so to speak. So there's a lot of these instant villains popping up on the streets, and um, it's kind of difficult for the heroes to deal with them because they're so immediate, and the people that are 
are committing these acts are not really bad people. They're just under the influence of this drug trigger. So you understand kind of the paradox here, whereas the heroes can't really get involved in this so much, so you have the vigilantes are the ones that actually hit the streets, like Knuckle Duster and uh, Koichi, who's nice guy. Later, he renames himself the Crawler because that's just, yeah, it's just a little bit more impressive. And um, Pop Step, the high school idol, they, they go out there and actually take on the problem at its root. Um, in Knuckle Duster's case, specifically just by punching them over and over again, which, hey, not a very hero thing to do, but once again, they're not heroes. Um, a lot of times they're kind of shown as like they were the, the ones that were shunned by society. Um, Koichi, I don't think, really sees it like that. It's just that he couldn't, he couldn't hack it as a hero, so, but he still wants to use his quirk for good. Um, sure, there's probably other legal ways that he could do that, but this is the way he just chose to do it. Through a certain set of circumstances, the main characters all end up living together, so they've kind of formed like a motley crew there, and their interactions and how they play off each other, it's just great. It's one of the reasons why I love it so much. Um, and I'll, I'll be definitely picking up future volumes of this and, and continuing this story. I'm not sure how long it's going to go. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not even going to sit here and hypothesize that it might sync up to the original story, because it doesn't have to. It's kind of doing its own thing, and obviously it, it has to like tie all this stuff together by the time we get to the timeline of My Hero Academia, but uh, like I said, a few years until we hit that point, and uh, I am looking forward to future cameos and who we might see or not see necessarily, but um, that's not the driving force that makes me coming back. It's definitely the main plot of this that keeps me coming back, and the main cast. So, um, thank you to Viz Media once again, and uh, thank you for uh, Furuhashi and Benton Court uh, for drawing and writing this respectively. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. This will be Teching 101 signing out later everybody sliding clock ow my knee oh that really hurt